India occupies just 2.3% of the world's land mass, yet it houses nearly 12% of the biodiversity of our planet. India is classified among the world's 17 mega diverse nations. It has a wide range of ecozones ranging from high mountains like the Himalayas, tropical and deciduous forests, swamps and plains. It has huge stretches of coastal areas. It is home to nearly 410 species of mammals nearly 1,300 species of birds, roughly 1,500 species of flowering trees and plants are here. 190 types of amphibians reside in this land. It also caters to different kinds of insects, arachnids, reptiles and other such types. These beauties of nature are currently losing their home due to the huge population explosion, illegal encroachments on forest lands and excess felling of trees. Though having 12% of the entire world's biodiversity, India has reserved only 5% of its total land for these animals. The problem is grave in the urban areas. These lands on which we reside today were earlier the homes of some of these animals. The most dangerous thing to happen is that in these urban areas where these species are trying their best to adjust and survive in human habitats, they are not provided with the right environment in the given spaces thanks to the flawed landscaping in urban open spaces. Humans often fail to recognize that we coexist with hundreds of other creatures around us. We are not the only living species dwelling in cities or such other locations. In our busy lifestyle, we fail to recognize and observe the existence of these living beings around us. And that's the reason we fail to understand the need to conserve these in the urban lookout. Conservation efforts get limited to the national parks and other such locations where urban population does hefty contributions. However, in their own garden they are destroying an existing ecosystem. In the urban scenario there are lots of open spaces. The problem is, these are used up to have all exotic varieties of trees. They are all made up aping the western countries, whereas in India, actually these are neither suitable nor economical. These gardens full of foreign varieties of plants, trees and flowers create an environment that is completely alien to the local varieties of birds, insects like bees and butterflies that need flowers and even small mammals like the mongoose often found in urban areas. They cannot accept these flowers or fruits as food just like an Indian non-vegetarian cannot accept snakes served on his plate even though this is commonly done in China. It is actually that butterflies need specific trees and plants that are found locally here. Simple plants like Rangoon creeper, periwinkle, oleander. Trees like Indian coral tree, local ficus varieties, the bale tree, the neem tree, fruit bearing trees like the custard apple, mango, neem are important to these creatures who recognize these trees as their home and the fruits and flowers they provide as their food. Insects too dwell on local varieties. Coming to reproduction like that of butterflies, 
they only recognize the host plants that suit them for egg laying. They will not lay eggs on any other plants. Just like this common crow butterfly lays eggs on plants like the oleander. Its entire future generation is dependent on what type of plants you have chosen in your garden. Most of the time people resort to bird feeders in urban areas and feel happy when the birds come on them. But actually one should feel sad when the birds are becoming dependent on you for the food. This means you have snatched away their natural food supply. Instead of bird feeders, one should plant fruit bearing trees like berries, neem, custard apple, pomegranate that do not need much space and maintenance. Most sunbirds love the local flowers like canna indica, hibiscus, rangoon creeper and such others. A little bit of green cover encourages birds to come into your garden and do natural pest control. Same is with spiders, if they are allowed some space in your garden. In a huge urban landscape, often lawns is a common option. Good looking and easy to maintain. But people are not aware that they are reducing the space for other creatures to that extent. The space where hundreds of other creatures and their families would have lived. Actually, wouldn't it be lovely to have chirping birds in shrubs and plants around you in the garden where they get their home and you get the enjoyment? Often gardens are decorated with statues and other objects that shine causing distraction to birds and animals. Most people tend to drive away any type of creature from their surrounding. It may be creatures like mongoose or snakes or even small ones like the spiders. Actually, the existence of these creatures is beneficial not just for our environment but also for the human existence. The main reason why a person tends to drive them away is ignorance about them, their behavior and importance in the life of others. Just like snakes control the rat population bothering people everywhere, the mongoose keeps control over snakes as well as the insects and spiders are primary controllers of insects. Bringing good-looking species of plants or animals from some other areas into your own space may cause disasters. Would the lady in Florida who brought home water hyacinth to decorate her surroundings with the flowers have ever imagined that it would become a massive headache for generations to come? So the key rule is let things be, let the creatures around you be. If you can't help them, at least don't destroy. When the story of a tiger being poached becomes headlines and news, we are crestfallen. We talk upon it, feel sad, contribute to tiger conservation funds and then feel happy that we did something for our environment. Also, in everyday life, we often say, what can I do for conservation? I can only feel sad about it but I have nothing in my hands. But is the tiger the only creature that needs to be cared for? Is there no other creature that is being harmed by your acts? Isn't every single creature in nature given an important role to play? There are some insects that pollinate the food plants without which we would go hungry. There are fish that breed in seas and rivers that become our food, the ones that are being polluted by our actions. The importance of snakes that control the rodent population cannot be underestimated. Without snakes, there would be thousands of rats around you, since one pair of rat breeds to 2000 rats in a year. Ants aerate the soil and also lead to seed dispersal, 
failing which we would not get crops in farms leaving us all hungry there are thousands of such examples of what contribution these creatures in nature make for us in urban areas living in huge buildings we often forget to think of the small ones living around us we do have a right to live in the cities but at least the open spaces can be utilized for the coexistence of humans and other creatures this is not only helping the creatures around but it is actually a fight for your own future survival if we do not conserve them we too will not exist ahead